You're listening to the Talkative Introvert Podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Melissa, and I am the host of the Talkative Introvert Podcast. Usually in the intro, I'll say... If you're new here, thanks for checking us out, blah, blah, blah. But to be honest, if you're new here, this may not be the best episode to start with. I might be a little sad, um, which isn't typically the tone of this podcast, but I don't know. I don't know if it's sad. Well, we'll see, I guess, as we go through it. But if you're not new here... Um, and you follow me on Instagram, you may already know what this episode will be about. And if you haven't guessed it yet, today will be a solo episode. I was actually wondering if I should ask someone to join me. I was going to ask my husband, but I already knew he wouldn't do it, which is completely understandable. It's not an easy topic to talk about. But anyways, I realized at this point, I still haven't mentioned what I was going to talk about. So... On March 8th, 2024, my family did get a little bit smaller. We had to say goodbye to our beloved dog, Link. I don't know why, but it felt weird to continue on with the podcast without mentioning him because he's such a big part of my life, mine and my husband's life, and our world just really revolved around him, and he was just such a major part of our family, and so... I guess you can say this is kind of an appreciation episode for him. I was thinking whether I should still do the podcast or not or just take a break, but I do have some episodes that need to be edited and they're with other people. So I kind of wanted to get those out. And then I mentioned this in earlier episodes, but it is season four. So I wanted to, you know, comically make it to 420. Um, So I'll probably still do that. But it didn't feel right moving on with the podcast without at least mentioning it. Because I do like to think of him as like my little co-host, even though he obviously doesn't talk. Uh, But you would hear him walking every walking around every once in a while, you know, or hear him bark or play with his toy. So he is present in some of the episodes and he's also in just all of the podcast podcast art, which I didn't really think about that and what that would mean when he passes away. I just, you know, he's just such a big part of my life and I love him so much that I wanted him in everything. So he is like in the album cover or I guess podcast cover, um, all the episode art. He's even like, like if you go on my Instagram, the, the highlights, you know, they're of him, like the MBTI version of him. And I just don't really know. I mean, I don't have to do anything right now, but it is something I was I've been thinking about lately. Like, what do I do? I keep it? Do I change the art? Like, at some point, do I just change it to just me, or do I just leave it there? You know, like these are the things that are just going in my head. And if I get a new dog, which is very highly unlikely, um, I'll get to that later. But I don't know. It's it feels weird if that was ever to happen to like replace him with another dog or just completely not include dogs in general and just have the art just be me. Cause it is technically me. It's my podcast. Um, I just, I include him in everything. Like I have a mouse pad, which I left at work. I, ha- I asked my coworker to keep it for me. Um, but you know, my mouse pad is him. My, like background is him. I have a little, um, like the, like the wax stamps. Uh, I have one of like his silhouette. So like I have a lot of Corgi things and things are of him specifically. And like our 
pictures that we put on the wall, like he's in there. So he's, he's just everywhere. And it just, it feels weird to get rid of that. And it it's also new. So I know I don't have to do anything now, but it was something I was thinking about. Um, anyways, I, I know there are people out there that think it's absolutely insane how close people are to their pets. There are people who don't even allow their pets onto their beds or on their couches or sometimes into their own home. You know, I've known people who left their dogs outside, um, who have like dog houses or specific areas outside of the house for their dogs. But for us, Link was the closest thing we would ever have to children. It was never in our plan to have children and it still isn't something that we want. So to us, Link truly was our first child. Um, I was telling my husband that we actually have never lived together for more than one year. Like just me and him. Before that, we lived with other people. Uh, so when I first moved out, like I moved in with him and his family. And then when we moved out, we lived with a sister and then, you know, and then we got our own place. But a year after we moved into our first apartment, we got Link. Uh, and that was, that was a hard one because I begged him to get a dog, but he did not want to get a dog. But I just really, really, really wanted one. And I've always loved dogs and always wanted them. My parents didn't care for dogs. Um, We did have some growing up, but I wasn't like super close to them. And they either got lost or stolen or given away. And so Link has been the one that I've like truly been close to. But anyways, so... I really, really wanted a dog. And so Brandon said we could get one as long as it was a Corgi. I don't know why. Um, Corgis are just his favorite dog. And if we were going to get one, we had to get that one. And I didn't care. I was like, whatever. I love all dogs. I was not picky. I'll take whatever I can get. I don't care what the breed is. Uh, So we did find a breeder nearby It was actually her last litter before she retired from breeding. So Link actually came from a line of champion dogs. Um, His parents won a bunch of awards. Link did not. It's actually pretty funny because his siblings went off to do some pretty cool things. Uh, I think his sister won a bunch of agility course awards and she lived in Dixon on like a farm and She was like a, a, like, you know, a show dog and she did the agility performances or whatever you call them. And then I know another sibling moved to Texas on a ranch to herd cattle or something like that. Uh, But that family specifically wanted her dogs, like her corgis, because there's corgi breeders everywhere. But this person specifically sought out her litter got a corgi through her and um yeah so that person or that sibling i think it's a sister i think yeah i think it's a sister became a herd dog a cattle dog out in texas and link is just he's the complete opposite (laughs) he was a very lazy dog He just wanted to eat all day um, and cuddle and watch TV and he would go outside, but he would immediately come back inside. Like he would go outside for a little bit, you know, play with the neighbor dogs, you know, go potty, do all that stuff. But he loved being inside and he didn't like being outside. And there were times where like I would accidentally you know, go, um, like for example, I went to go get the mail and closed him out (laughs) on accident because he followed me, but didn't, I didn't hear him go back inside or I didn't hear him go out with me. And then all I hear is just barking at the front door because he wanted to come in. So he didn't even like try to run away. He just would rather be inside. So completely different from his siblings. And when he 
was a puppy. So we got to see him for the first time with the rest of the litter. And we actually really liked him because his siblings were super energetic, very high energy, jumping, playing with each other, um, even like yapping and like just all over the place. And Link was the only one in the corner by himself. And if um, I have to see if I saw the pictures, but there were pictures of him when he was a baby and all his siblings are like bunched together. And there is one of him where he's just he's just by himself. He's that's just how he was from the beginning. And it was honestly a perfect match because he was just a really chill dog. We didn't do a good job socializing him, though. I will say that. But that's because we're not social people. So he did bark at all our guests relentlessly. Uh, but aside from that, he was a super chill dog. Sometimes he was so silent, I would forget he would be right next to me. Uh, and unless he like made a noise or I accidentally like step on him or something. But other than that, he was pretty chill, easy going. People loved um, puppy sitting him. So whenever we were out of town and my friends had to come and puppy sit, you know, they always told us how much of an angel he was. He was also just extremely intelligent. It was so easy to train him because he was so food obsessed. As long as he had treats, he would do literally anything. We were still teaching him new things before he passed away. So when people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, clearly didn't meet Link because all you needed was food. Like we taught him how to ring the bells when um, so we have bells that are on our door. And so we taught him how to ring, ring them to let us know if he needed to potty. And then he had this peanut shaped toy and if you asked him, where's your peanut, he would lead you to it. And that one, we didn't even mean to teach him that. We would just repeatedly ask him, where's his peanut? And he would eventually just catch on. Because, like, you know, he would play with it and it would be somewhere in the house. And we would just, just say, like, where's your peanut? Where is it? And we would, like, look around the house and then say, like, oh, there it is. Um, and so I think he caught on to the point where, like, every time we say that... He would just lead us straight to his peanut. And, you know, there's stuff like that, like times like that, where we didn't even have to really train him. He just figured it out, you know, and he he knew all his tricks verbally and silently, silently, meaning like every trick had a hand gesture associated with it. So he can do all his tricks without you saying anything. Uh, you would just need to make the hand gesture and he knew what to do and like vice versa, you know, like you don't have to do the hand gesture. You can just like verbally tell him. So there's like a lot of stuff that we taught him that, you know, took almost no time to learn. He just, he really was such, such an amazing dog. He was so smart, so easy. Like I've met other dogs where it took months and months to teach him how to be potty trained or taught, teach him how to do any tricks or anything, or like it would take forever. Um, and it's not necessarily like the trainer, right? Like some, some people, like some dogs just, I mean, you know, some dogs are just not that smart. <laughs> Let's just be real. But he was extremely intelligent and it definitely made training so much easier on us. And I realized that I have to keep remembering to also use past tense when referring to him. It's weird because sometimes I think I can still hear him. And sometimes I still get a, a whiff of him. Like they'll smell him because we still haven't put the stuff away or washed any of his bedding. Like it's still in the living room. And with the noise, I think I'm just realizing all the times that our house made a noise. It wasn't actually Link. We just have a really old creaky house. So that's been a little weird to get used to because I I am here by myself most of the time. Or at least not, well, just when Brandon's at work. So I didn't realize how noisy your house is or how creaky it is. But that is that has been the hardest part of all of this is just how 
absolutely quiet the house is during the day. I mean, it's it's I like it's kind of easy because I have work to think about and be distracted with, especially when I have to go into the office, which is only two days a week. But nights have been really hard for sure because it's just so quiet. I'm so used to him like shuffling around or snoring or I don't know, just I'm used to something being around me at all times. And I think that's been really the hardest thing of this whole experience is that I've never really, I just thought about this, but I've never really just been alone. I haven't just been alone in our house for a very, very long time. The only time I've ever been alone alone is like when he had his spinal surgery and he had to be in the hospital for like two weeks, but that was only two weeks. And all the other times, like if Brandon took him out, you know, maybe I'll be alone for like a couple hours. But other than that, I've never truly been alone in my own home before. And it's very uncomfortable. I don't know if that's the right word. I guess uncomfortable and just lonely and like, I don't know. I just don't really know how to describe it. But it, it, it's very weird not having something living around you at all times, if that makes sense. It's just been really hard to figure out what life is. Like we're in this place where we're trying to figure out what life is going to be without him. It's really crazy to think about how much our life did revolve around him. Like our day literally starts or started and ended with him from the moment we get up in the morning to the the moment we go to sleep. You know, like every morning Link would wake Brandon up to feed him and take him out. At night we would move from the living room, living room to the bedroom. And every night we always tell Link, you know, time for bed and Link would just follow us to the bedroom. Like our day to day life from beginning to end involved him being there. And everything in this home, in this house, is just a reminder of him. And that's been really hard. I still catch myself doing things that I technically don't have to do anymore. Like the other day I was holding my plate of food looking for something and I realized that I could just put my plate down because Link used to be really sneaky and he'll wait for you to not look at him or for you to like be distracted <laughs> and he'll try to sneak a bite of your dinner like when I drop food Link would instantly rush over to eat it and now I have to actually pick it up and throw it away and there's just tiny things like that you know, that we're trying to get used to because of him and the adjustments just been so weird. It's so foreign. It's just very alien to us. Like when I fill up my water, I also fill up Blink's water bowl. And I keep finding myself trying to do that. Like, I don't know. The list just, it just goes on. It's, it's weird, but it is, it's, it's weird what we do and also what we don't have to do anymore like this is like a this was a new thing but like link started rummaging through our garbage can last year i think it started last year don't know why he just maybe he it just clicked that he could do that i don't don't know but you know so every time we leave or have to yeah every time we leave we always make sure that the trash can lid is on and now like i still do it sometimes but I, th- I remember thinking like I don't actually have to do this anymore but anyway it's going back to what I said earlier you know um Brian and I have truly only spent one year living together just me and him and the last 10 and a half years has been with Link so we're kind of in this weird limbo like this le- weird time in our life that we don't actually know what life is like without him and it's been interesting navigating through that for sure for the both of us I think I can you know can say for the both of us that this truly has been one of the hardest things that we've ever been through and I have been through the death of you know my grandma my dad my brother my aunt but something about this just feels so different like as much as I love 
the family members I've lost, they weren't my day to day, you know, like my world didn't revolve around them. I didn't start and end my day with them for the past 10 and a half years, you know, and Link literally did everything with us. He used to go with us on vacations when we would go out of town. Like he's been to Oregon and Nevada and all over California. And we've been on long road trips together. And we used to only get Airbnbs because of him. Because most hotels don't take dogs. And we just did so much together. Like he was just such a big part of our lives and it's just, it's just so different from, you know, other people. <laughs> that's, I don't know if that's really sad. I'm sure like some people would be offended by that, but it's true. You know, like as much as I miss my dad and like my brother and my aunt, like they weren't, they weren't my day to day. They weren't, you know, my life didn't revolve around them. Like I didn't change the way I do things or how I do go about my day because of them. And I think that's what makes it really hard, you know? And I think for me, what gets me the most was that it was unexpected, to be honest. And it was so quick because, you know, he's a very healthy dog and goes to appointments regularly. And even the last like physical he had, you know, before his spinal surgery, the vet even said, like, he looks amazing. He looks great. Like, if she didn't know him, she would have thought he was, like, only six years old or something like that. And, you know, he did end up having the spinal surgery last year. But a week before he died, he actually started walking again. And he was getting to the point where he was able to walk. And I even um, walked him out in our neighborhood for the first time, which he hasn't been able to do in a really long time. And I got so excited that I even bought more poop bags because I thought, you know, like, you know, this is it. Like he's finally recovering and finally getting over the surgery. Like we can go on our daily walks again, like we used to and, you know, do all that stuff again. But unfortunately he did have lung cancer, which we didn't know. Um, but as we've read and heard from the vets, like lung cancer is just, it's a beast and people, Dogs that have lung cancer, you know, they don't recover from it most of the time, majority of the time. And, you know, his treatments would end up being like surgery and chemo and doing all this stuff. And, you know, it is different from a human, right? Like putting our dog through that kind of pain and he doesn't understand why and doesn't understand what we're doing to him. And like, that's just, it would just depress him and it would just make his life worse. It wouldn't have, it would have, it would have been inhumane to put him through all that. And all it would do really is to elongate his life just for me and Brandon. And that's very selfish, you know, because he would be suffering the whole time. And, you know, that it just wasn't, it's not right to do that to him, but it was very unexpected. Like he had a hard time breathing one Sunday And then it just got progressively worse by Friday and we had to put him down because he was essentially suffocating from his own like blood. I think that was in his lungs. But if it wasn't for cancer, he probably would have lived much longer. It really, it really sucked because I always imagined that his last day was going to be like, of course, sad, but I always imagined it'd be like a really beautiful day, you know, like my coworker, actually, he just put down his dog recently and, but they knew when it was going to happen. So they took her to the beach and gave her a steak and they watched the sunset together. And it was, it was just, you know, a really beautiful story. And I wanted the same thing for Link. I wanted to give, get him like a, a ribeye steak and, Even like, I don't know if you've seen those videos, but like giving their dogs chocolate cake because they're not supposed to, but that was their chance to like have like this forbidden fruit, you know, because he was so food obsessed. I wanted to get him all like the, his favorite foods and all the foods that like he couldn't have, but he wanted, you know, like it was going to be like the best last feast ever. Um, I am glad that he wasn't alone. 
and we got to say goodbye to him. The three of us got to be together until um until he he passed away. But something that people keep asking us is they keep asking us if we're gonna get another dog. First of all, if you if you know someone who just had a dog that passed away, don't ask them that question, please. It's just so I don't know. For me, I feel like it's rude. It's like it just happened, you know? And then the first thing you're gonna ask, like, are you gonna replace the thing you the the very much thing that you love? Like, are you going to replace it soon? You know, like it's, you don't, (laughs) like you don't ask people like, are you going to get a new brother or are you going to get a new dad? Are you going to get a new aunt? Like, I don't know. Like, I understand it's a dog. You can get another dog. It's not like other situations, but even like with friends, you know, you don't say like, oh, are you going to get a new best friend when your best friend dies? So I mean, I get it. You know, what else are they going to say? What else do people say when your dog passes away? Like, I don't even know what to say when, whenever the time comes when other people's dogs pass away. But I, I have heard that people who do lose their dogs, they do tend to say that, no, they don't want to get another dog. But then like a year or so passes and they just can't help it and they end up getting another dog. I don't know and you know maybe I might end up being in that statistic but I just don't know if I can go through this again like I don't do well with emotions already and I very much hate crying and this is probably the most I've ever cried like my entire life I have never felt this much pain or cried this much which sounds sad considering I listed off that I've lost like my dad and my brother and you know, these and my aunt, these people, but I cried about them and I was sad, but not this sad. And I just don't think that I have the emotional strength to do this all over again with another dog. I know that this is the circle of life and everything at some point will die, but I don't want to purposely put myself in that position knowing that I will outlive my dog and knowing and ex- like experiencing what the af- after like I know what the aftermath already is I know what I'm going to experience the next time around and I just don't know if I'm mentally stable enough or emotionally strong enough to do that to myself again With that said, though, I don't regret ever having Link. I would do it all over again to have him again and to be with him and to have this life with him again. Because dogs, I think this is going to be like a very unpopular opinion, probably. But I feel like dogs or just pets in general are the only creatures that truly do love you unconditionally. People don't want to admit it, but human to human love is conditional. It just is whether people want to believe it or not. But the love you get from your pets, I wholeheartedly believe is truly unconditional. And I don't think any human relationship can ever replicate that kind of bond. And I'm sure parents out there are like people who don't put their pets to that high regard would agree with that sentiment but you know link will he always loved me and brandon from the beginning from the moment we brought him home you know like people i've known people who like disown their own children or disown their own parents like it literally just happened during the pandemic i knew people who got into facebook wars with their family and loved ones and disowned them afterwards so it, love is conditional, especially human to human. You know, people say like, especially people who want me and Brand to have kids because we don't want kids, but they're like, you never felt love like having a baby or you don't know true unconditional love until you have a baby. And it's like, yeah, but babies are temporary. At some point they're going to grow up and be adults and the love will become conditional. You know, like they're not babies forever. And obviously I don't 
know what it's like to be a mother and I don't plan on ever being a mother to a human baby because it sounds terrifying, but people are capable of doing things that pets just are incapable of doing. You know what I mean? Like a pet can't cheat on you. <laughs> like a pet can't like betray you or like, like you are your pet's whole world. You are their day and their night and their life. They're, you're their everything. And so it's just a different, it's just diff, a different kind of love. And to know that it's a short lived love that you are going to outlive them and they're going to pass away. That's a hard thing. That's a, that's a hard thing to go through all the time and to purposely go through it every time. So I honestly, like, I understand the concept of transition dogs to help ease that pain, but we didn't go that route, obviously. And I don't know how that is, but I just don't think, and I don't know, maybe that'll change because this is also new, but Man, it's that hard to go through. I just don't know if I can do it. But I am glad to have known that kind of love. And I'm glad to have that experience. Like, I'm I'm grateful that Link gave me that experience. And I got to have that little family of ours for just a little bit. I mean, Link was and will always be a part of our little, our little family. Because he truly was just the best boy. Well, if you made it this far, thanks for, you know, kind of listening through that, listening to me. Um, again, I don't, I don't know why I did this episode, maybe because I find it therapeutic to, to talk it through and share this experience with somebody, even if it's just like to a microphone staring at my computer, (laughs) but no, thank you for listening and if you're going through what I'm going through or if you've gone through it already, I know that it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to take time and it's okay to grieve and it's okay to talk about it and talk about it with people. Sorry if, if this episode was too sad. I know it's not what I usually talk about, but wanted to, I guess, say a final goodbye, especially because he's the, the face of this podcast, if you will, you know. His art, the art is like, has him and my Instagram page has him and he's just everywhere. And so I wanted to do a little, I guess, appreciation, appreciation episode for Link. Thank you for listening. I will talk to you guys in the next episode.